Have a look at question number four. This is for £5,000. You've got £1,000 guaranteed. Uh, you would obviously lose £1,000 if you played for it and gave me a wrong answer. But you've got all three lifelines untouched. This is for £5,000. It's question number four. In the horse racing calendar, the Epsom Derby is traditionally held in which month? June, July, August, September. I'm going to have to use a lifeline on this one. OK. Yeah. Uh, what are you going to do? I'm going to ask the audience to be as nice as they can <laughs> and try and help me, please. It's very polite. <laughs> OK, right. First lifeline that Alison's needed. Uh, audience, all in your keypads, please. This is the question. In the horse racing calendar, the Epsom Derby is traditionally held in which month? A on your keypads will be June, B will be July, C will be August, D will be September. It's worth £5,000. All vote now. Yeah. What do you mean, the... yes? You're not going to say, to, oh, that's to... the one I was thinking <laughs> of, Chris. It's, it's not. If I was on the 50,000 and it was guaranteed and I had to do a total random guess, that is the one that they've gone for. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, you want to play? I definitely want to play. Final answer. Final answer. Thank you. It's the right answer. You have £5,000. <laughs> You still have two lifelines? Yeah. What do you want to do with the money? I put it towards getting myself a house, cos I'm still living with my parents at the moment, and it would be really nice to have my own place. Or well, you don't like them? No, I love them to bits, <laughs> but I'm, I'm 34. I'm just staring. <laughs> What's your mum's face? I love your mum. I love you, mummy. <laughs> and dad. OK, you are... Three away from 50,000. The next question is worth 10,000. You can double your money here. You would lose 4,000 pounds if you gave me a wrong answer. Uh, have a look at it. Tell me what you want to do. This is question number five. It's worth 10 grand. Who married the actor Greg Wise in 2003? Amanda Holden, Rachel Weiss, Emma Thompson, Alex Kingston. It's worth £10,000. Yeah. Who married the actor Greg Wise in 2003? Amanda Holden, Rachel Weiss, Emma Thompson, Alex Kingston. What are you thinking, Alison? I don't think it's Emma Thompson. I'm veering towards A and B, but I, I don't know. I'm going to have to use another lifeline on this one, okay. unfortunately. I want to phone a friend. Yeah, who are you going to phone? Um, my brother, Chris. OK. Um, is he good? Is he good at this sort of stuff? He's fairly good at this sort of stuff, I hope. <laughs> fairly yeah. good at this sort of stuff, I hope. Yeah, I think he'll know it. OK, was he, was he up in Coventry? He's in Coventry, OK, yeah. phone him. Um, you do not have to take his answer. Yeah. Uh, you can still use 50-50 and you can still walk away with £5,000. OK. See what he says. Hello? Chris? Yes, speaking. Chris Tarrant here, how are you? Oh, hello, I'm very well, thank you, how are you? Well, I'm fine now, you know what's happened, your sister's here, she's doing rather well. I can't um, believe that. Well, I know, <laughs> she she's going to share lots of it with her baby brother, she says. Fantastic. And she didn't say anything like that at all. Um, <laughs> she's got five grand, uh, but okay. she's stuck on a particular question, Chris, that is worth £10,000. OK. All right, mate, so the next voice here will be Alison, she'll tell you the question. There are still four possible answers, one of those is worth ten grand. OK. OK, right, Alison, lots of luck, darling. You've got 30 Thank seconds. You. Your time starts now. Who married the actor Greg Wise in 2003? Amanda Holden, Rachel Wise, Emma Thompson or Alex Kingston? Greg White. Greg Wise in 2003. Greg Wise. Yeah, Am give me the options again. Amanda Holden, Rachel Wise, Emma Thompson, Alex Kingston. Ten seconds. Please help. Um, I could only have a guess at that, I'm afraid. Which would I, don't, you guess? I don't know. Which would um, you guess? Mm. Quick! Oh, oh, I'm not sorry, no, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Oh! Okay. Well, there's two that I'm fairly sure it's not, so if I use my 50 50 and it's left with one of them, then. Are you sure it's not? Um. I don't think it's Emma Thompson, and I don't think it's Alex Kingston, but. But I don't know. 
I'll see what's left. I'll take right. the 50-50. Okay, computer see. take away two random wrong answers. Leave Alison the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. Oh my god. <laughs> um What are you thinking? I'm gonna try, because I'm only in this chair once. So I'm going to go with Rachel Wise and hope and pray that I'm right. Final answer. <laughs> Alison, you have five thousand pounds. You've just oh, lost no. four thousand. Oh, okay. Emma Thompson is the right answer. Uh, Give her a big hand. She still goes away with one thousand pounds. <laughs> right, we have ten brand new contestants switching to get into that chair. We'll meet them in a couple of minutes. Don't go away. <laughs> Right, back to serious business. We have ten ever so nicely turned out people that made it through our recent auditions, but which of them will make it into the most sought-after seat in the land? Let's meet them. They are... John Foley from Greater Manchester. <laughs> Nicole Adams from Essex. Jill Truitt from Gwent. Pat Hughes from the West Midlands. Jilly Crichton from Berkshire. Linda Amarillo from West Sussex. Alan Bailey from Bristol. Angeline Plummer from Warwickshire. Yvonne Mills from Cheshire. And James Davies from Southampton. <laughs> OK, here we go. Time to play Fast Finger First to select the next valiant contender to try for a million quid. We have one question. It'll have four answers, only one correct order. Let's find out who can arrive at that correct order in the shortest possible time. No distraction, please, from the audience. They need some thinking time. Here is their first question. Put these words in order to give the name of a financial institution. Exchange New Stock York. Two of them looking terribly pleased with themselves, one or two looking absolutely distraught. Right, let's have a look. This is the right order. I think you'll find it's fairly straightforward. New York Stock Exchange. Well-known financial institutions. That's the right order. Now, out of ten, I don't think all ten got it right. Let's have a look. These got it right. Most but not all. Who was fastest? Uh, John Foley in 3.05 seconds. Come on, John. So, next to try for a million quid is John Foley from Manchester. He's a medical rep selling replacement hip joints and anything else people need, so he says. Uh, John still lives at home with his mum and two younger sisters. And, in fact, it's sister Sean who's come along to give him a bit of support this evening. And she says to get her own 15 minutes of fame. <laughs> John's needs are still relatively simple, so a few quid on the show would be blown on a New York shopping spree for his sisters, uh, his mum's mortgage, Sean's car repairs and a box at Manchester United for himself. Oh, and some serious partying with all his mates. <laughs> it's only a million quid. <laughs> right, John is just 12 questions away from a million pounds, and, of course, he has the help of three brand new lifelines. Lots of luck. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> so, back down the bottom, question number one is for £500. Here you are, John. Tell me what you want to do. Here it comes. What term is traditionally given to all the oceans of the world? Five seas. Six C's, seven C's, eight C's. It's C, seven C's. Sail the seven C's. The right answer, you've got 500 pounds. <laughs> right, last point, John, you could go home with nothing at all. I'm sure it won't happen. You have all three lifelines. Uh, question number two, we guarantee you're going back to Manchester at least a thousand pounds better off. Here it comes. What name is given to an addition to a will? A codex, 
codeine, codicil, codling. I've not got a clue. I've not got a clue. I will ask the audience. OK, you're probably a bit young to think about a will. Yeah. Um, right, audience, on your keypads, please. This is the question. What name is given to an addition to a will? Now, A on your keypads is Codex, B is Codeine, C is Codicil, D is Codling. A, B, C or D, it's worth £1,000 guaranteed. All vote now. Uh, 93 think Codicil, 6% think Codex, nobody thinks Codeine, somebody thinks Codling. Uh, it's your choice. Yeah, it makes me look uh, really clever, that. Um, I'll go for C, Codicil. I thought you might. Yeah. That's the right answer, you've got £1,000. <laughs> you have £1,000. Um, you are at this moment ten away from a million, and you have still two lifelines. You've got a fifty-fifty, and you've got a phone a friend. What do you sell? Um, replacement joints. Who to? Um, surgeons. Oh, you don't sort of get hailed on the street by people. Oh, do you know I could really? I do. Sure, I'm not. No, no. <laughs> you could do with a new knee. <laughs> How does it work? Then? Um, basically, you go into hospitals, talk to surgeons, and if they like you, they'll buy the stuff off you. If they don't, they won't. Right, well, you've got some work to do. You have £1,000. You have a uh, phone a friend, you have 50 50. Question number three is for £2,000. Have a look. Who topped the charts with Thunder in My Heart again? <laughs> 29 years after his last number one. John's nodding, and I think we know it. Let's have a look. <laughs> Here it comes David Essex, David Cassidy, Gilbert O'Sullivan, Leo Sayer. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Leo Sayer. Why are you laughing manically? Because my other little sister um, takes the mick out of Leo Sayer quite a bit after his appearance on uh, Big Brother. Yeah, yeah. Final answer? Yeah. It's the right answer. You've got £2,000. <laughs> All right, question number four is for £5,000. You've still got a 50 50. You can still find a friend. Have a look. Uh, tell me if you want to play it. Who preceded and also succeeded Clement Attlee as British Prime Minister? Harold Wilson, Anthony Eden, Edward Heath, Winston Churchill. Thinking D. Winston Churchill. Yeah, D. I'll play. Sure. Yeah. Final answer. Yeah. <laughs> so right answer, you just won five thousand pounds. <laughs> right, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> right, you have five thousand pounds. Question number five is for ten grand. You have two lifelines. Here it comes. In which of these countries is the dollar not the unit of currency? In which of these countries is the dollar not the unit of currency? Jamaica, Mexico, New Zealand, Singapore. Can I phone a friend? You can. Um... Who do you know who would know? Uh, Mike. Mike? OK. Where's he? Manchester? Yeah. OK. Who's he? He's my uncle. Uncle Mike? Yeah. OK, we phone him. Uh, tell him the question, four possible answers. Tell him it's worth £10,000 and uh, see what it does. You've still got a 50-50 if you need it. Uh, you can still walk away five grand better off. <laughs> Chris Tarrant, how are you? Who's that? Chris Tarrant, how are you? Oh, Chris Tarrant, yeah, Chris, yes. Yeah, that's I'm me, fine, Chris. Chris. Me, Chris, you, Mike, yeah? Yes, I'm fine. Good. Um, well, you know John Foley? I do. Your Uncle Mike. Well, John's here in the chair, he's doing OK. Oh, good, good, I'm glad. Well, except that he's stuck on a particular question. Now, Mike, this is a bit serious, it's worth £10,000 to him. 
Right, I'll try. <laughs> no pressure then. Right, serious, serious business. The next voice here will be John's. You'll tell you the question. There are four possible answers. One of them is worth £10,000. All right, mate? Right, OK. OK, John, fingers crossed. Your time starts now. Go. Hi, Mike. In which of these countries is the dollar not the unit of currency? Is it Jamaica, Mexico, New Zealand or Singapore? Not the unit of currency. Yeah. Oh. 15 seconds, Mike. I would think Mexico. I, I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. No worries. I would think it was Mexico. OK. Cheers, Mike. Uh, uh, um, yeah. Oh, OK, Jonathan. Nice one. Sorry. Bye. In town, sure. Um, can I go 50 50? You can. Right, computer take away two random wrong answers. Leave John the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. So Jamaica's there, Mexico's still there. You got five grand. I might as well play it. Um... You lose £4,000 if you're wrong, John. I'll gain five if I'm right. <laughs> um... I'll play it B, Mexico. Even though you haven't got a clue? Yeah. Final answer. Final answer. You just won £10,000. <laughs> Mexico still uses the, uh, the peso. The other three uh, all use dollars. Right, you have ten grand. You are two away from fifty thousand pounds. You have no lifelines left. Question number six. You can double your money here, but it's a big old drop. You would lose nine thousand pounds here if you gave me a wrong answer. Here's the question: Which of these is made from a coil of sweet dough? Bath Oliver, Chelsea Bun, Sally Lunn, Eccles Cake. It's not an Eccles cake. I know that much. Thinking C. What? Sally Lund. It's just an inkling, it's a total inkling. Again, I ain't got a clue. You got so ten grand, you lose nine yeah. if you gave me the wrong answer. Uh, you got no life lunch. Nine grand's a lot to lose. That is a lot to lose. I kick myself. Absolutely kick myself. If it was C. It's tough being up here. Eh? It's tough. It's because it's serious money, that's why it's eh. tough. No, I'm going to take the money. I'm going to take the money. Final answer. Final answer. OK, give him a big hand. He goes away with £10,000. <laughs> I will tell you, it's not an Eccles cake. I will tell you, it's not a Bath Oliver. If you said Sally Lunn, which you nearly did, didn't you? Yeah. You were there. Yeah. You'd lost £9,000. <gasps> the right answer Ooh. is Chelsea Bunn. <laughs> <laughs> Results. £10,000. Right, nine contestants left, just cracking their knuckles in readiness to do battle with those fastest finger first keypads. Nice and quiet, in the audience, as always. Here is their next question. Starting in North America and moving east, put these wine producing regions in order Hunter Valley, Bordeaux, Chianti, Napa Valley. Let's have a look. It's um, it's fairly sort of straightforward. Just basically starting at the states, going eastwards. So, obviously, starting in America, California, Napa Valley, then in France, Bordeaux, then Italy, Chianti, and then down to Australia. Moving right across the east in Australia, Hunter Valley. That's the right order. Now nine left. How many got it right? Let's have a look. Uh, two. Who was faster? Alan Bailey in five seconds. Come on, Alan, don't just sit there. Let yourself away from those women. You're absolutely enormous. You want to pay for a million pounds? Yes, please. Well, that's why you're here.
Right, now we have Alan Bailey, a retired dentist from Bristol. Alan had his own dental practice for 37 years, but retired three years ago. Uh, he met his wife, Kay Ruth, when they were both young students together. They've now been married for 42 years. They have three grown-up kids and three grandkids. But it's their youngest daughter, Lucy, who's come along today to offer Daddy moral support. Lucy says she's already dreamed up lots of ways for Daddy to spend any winnings on the show on her. <laughs> Alan himself is rather more cautious, but he says he and Kay Ruth would love to travel to Australia to meet their latest grandchild, James, who is just four months old. So let's try and help that. Uh, Twelve questions, three brand new lifelines, one million pounds. Alan, lots of luck. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Right, right down at the bottom, question number one is for £500. Here we go. Nuns are a feature of which of these films? Oliver, Sound of Music, Mary Poppins, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. I know the answer to this. But at this stage, one always starts everything. I'm certain that's the Sound of Music. Final answer? Final answer. It's the right answer. You've got £500. <laughs> Question number two. We're guaranteed £1,000. Here it comes. Which member of the 2005 Ashes winning England cricket team has the nickname Freddie? Ashley Giles, Simon Jones, Andrew Flintoff, Steve Harmison. I believe that's Andrew Flintoff. You have £1,000. <laughs> you feeling, Alan? Calm? Worryingly so. Worryingly so. Well, don't be worried if you're calm, it's good. You said about um, your whole trip here, really, you said, amongst other things, apart from going home, hopefully with a few quid, you said, I just want to have a nice day out. Absolutely. Are and you having been, a nice day out? It's been wonderful. Wonderful. Until this bit. <laughs> I'm enjoying this too. OK, you have £1,000. You are ten away from a million. You have all three lifelines untouched. This is question number three for £2,000. What a Bobby Dazzler is the subtitle of the autobiography of which TV celebrity? Des Lynham, Paul Ross, David Dickinson, Henry Kelly. I think that's David Dickinson. Why? Because I seem to remember he has a particularly red face. <laughs> a sort of orange and, uh, face. Orange face. <laughs> an orange face. Well, depends if you've got a black and white set. And I can see that face saying Bobby Dazzler. Final answer. Final answer. It's absolutely right. You've got £2,000. <laughs> Rather nice about having a dentist in the chair for a change. Nice <laughs> one. <laughs> Some water there if you want to spit. Um, <laughs> right, you have two grand. Question number four is for five thousand pounds. You have all three lifelines untouched. What is the southernmost city of the continental USA? San Antonio, Baton Rouge, El Paso, Key West. The southernmost city. Baton Rouge is the lower part of Louisiana and Key West is the bottom of Florida. And I'll say Key West. Final answer. Final answer. You are right, you just won £5,000. <laughs> Right, serious money starting to build up now. Question number five is for 10,000. Question number five used to be worth 1,000 pounds, it's now worth 10,000. Have a look, you have all three lifelines untouched so far, Alan. Tell me what you want to do. What does the I stand for in the medical abbreviation RSI? Inflammation, infection, insulin, injury. R-S-I. What does the I stand for? I think it's repetitive strain injury, which would mean it would be D, injury. 
Final answer? Final answer. It was very quick. It's also absolutely spot on. You've got £10,000. A lot of love coming down from your daughter. <laughs> to do with how much money you've got. Lucy apparently has got lots of ideas on how to spend the money. Oh, yes. That's she, very good of her. She's been my financial advisor for many years. <laughs> <laughs> on how to spend your money. Yes. Okay. You're in good shape. You have £10,000. You have not yet touched any lifelines. You're two away from £50,000, which is the next milestone. Question number six is for £20,000. Here it comes. Which former member of ABBA released the album My Colouring Book in 2004? Agnetha, Benny, Björn, Frida. Hmm. I have the remotest idea. So, please, may I ask this audience? Yes, audience, <laughs> serious money, then. This is for £20,000. <clears throat> All of you keypads, please, this is the question. Which former member of ABBA released the album My Colouring Book in the year 2004? Now, A on your keypad is Agnetha, B is Benny, C, Björn, D, Frieda. It's worth £20,000. Please all vote now. Thirty nine percent is... It's a small majority, but it is a majority. Um, it's your call, really, Alan. <clears throat> right, it's fairly close, isn't it? Yeah, um, I mean, 39% is, is kind of emphatic, but it's not, you know, a 95% or whatever. I think I'd like to uh, phone a friend. OK, now, who of your friends would know this? I think, um... I will phone Bruce. Bruce? OK, where's he? He's in uh, Somerset. What's he do? He's actually, from runs his own business, but he uh, has a history of archaeology. Oh, you bound to know then. <laughs> I suppose you might. Old groups. Um, okay. Right. We'll phone Bruce. Uh, tell him the question. Four possible answers. One of them is worth twenty thousand pounds. Hello. Bruce. Hello. Chris Tarrant, How are you? Chris Tarrant, uh, Yeah, very well, thank you. Well, you know, you <laughs> said you're going to be a phone a friend for Alan Bailey. I, I, I vaguely remember. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid this is that bit, mate. Um, so, serious business. Alan's doing rather well. Um, oh, but he's stuck on a particular question. It is worth £20,000. Great. OK, so next voice here will be Alan. So you'll tell her the question. There are four possible answers. One of them is worth twenty grand. All right, mate? Great, thank you very much. OK, fingers crossed, Alan. 30 seconds. Your time starts now. Bruce, which former oh. member of ABBA released the album My Colouring Book in 2004? Was it Agnetha, Benny, Bjorn or Frida? Uh, Alan, I don't know for certain. I, I would say I, it would be Agnetha, but I honestly don't know. That, that is a guess. Right, thank you very Apologies much. Apologies for that. Uh, Good luck, Alan. OK, thank you, Bruce. Hmm. I've got no idea. A 50-50 a will not help. So I will say thank you very much. I will uh, leave now. No, oh, that was rather sudden. <laughs> You're not going to play? I, no, certainly, I certainly wouldn't talk you into no. it. £10,000? Thank you. You've had a very nice day. I've had a lovely day, thank you very and much. Now you're going to have a very nice evening with £10,000. Thank you very much. OK, give him a big hand. He goes away with £10,000. <laughs> I will tell you that he did sort of vaguely say he thought it might be Agnetha, but he wasn't sure. And, in fact, 39% of the audience thought it was uh, the blonde one as well. And the answer was Agnetha. And it would have been. Ooh, and it, ooh, and it would have been worth £20,000, but I think if you're not certain, and you would have lost nine if you were wrong. Give him a big hand, he goes away with £10,000. Have a nice day. £10,000. <laughs> OK, he goes away with £10,000. We still have eight hopefuls eager to earn their place up there in the glare of the spotlight. Is their chance. We're playing fastest finger first again for the third time tonight. Nice and quiet, please, in the audience. Here comes the next question. Put these phrases in the order they are uttered by the witches in Shakespeare's Macbeth. Fire burn and cauldron bubble, double, double, toil and trouble.
other two of them now starting to giggle again. <laughs> the end of hysteria. Right, this is the right order. I think everybody in the world probably knows this. Double double. Toil and trouble. <laughs> Fire ban and cauldron double. <laughs> so that's the right order. Now, how many got it right out of our remaining eight? I think most of them from their faces. Have a look. Not all at all. Uh, Nicole Adams <laughs> in 4.74. Now, quite pleased then. <laughs> Nicole, are you pleased? Yes. Yes. You want to play for a million quid? Yes, please. Oh. Right, clearly very excited about the whole thing is Nicole Adams from Harold Wood in Essex. Uh, Nicole started out as a graphics designer for a mail order catalogue. Uh, she's now an advertising art director working primarily with major charity organisations. She and Ben, her partner of 15 years, met thanks to an exchange glance on the escalators of the London Underground. Yes, it really does happen in real life. But it's a friend Karen who's come along for support this evening. Nicole would like to win enough on the show to complete her training by doing an MA in illustration. She'd also like to see gorillas and pandas in the wild. Look at you. Are you right? Yeah. Are you the last? I think I just might hang on. OK, right. Twelve questions. Three brand new lifelines. One million pounds is how it works. Nicole, lots of luck. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? OK, question number one is for £500. Just two questions now between you and £1,000, but obviously you could go home with nothing. You have three lifelines. Here it is. Cobbles are a famous feature of which TV soap? EastEnders, Coronation Street, Family Affairs, Neighbours. It's got to be Coronation Street. It's the right answer. You've got 500 <laughs> quid. <laughs> Question number two for £1,000. Here it is. Have a look. Which of these counties is most associated with cider making? Somerset, Durham, Lancashire, Essex. <laughs> Why are you laughing, Manica? Oh, because you're from Harold Wood. <laughs> yeah. Do they make a lot of cider in the Harold Wood area? I did quite a bit of drinking of it. Well, yes, they probably do. <laughs> As the streets on a Saturday, um, we'll attest to. But I think it's Somerset. It's the right answer. You've got a £1,000, Nicole. <laughs> You've had an extraordinary complicated life. <laughs> you once had to direct Kenneth Branagh. Oh, that, yeah, that was really exciting. Because I work on charity adverts, I get very lucky and I get to work with really famous people that like helping charities, and he was really sweet. What did but he have to do then? He had to be a collie dog. <laughs> <laughs> you directed Kenneth Branagh as a collie dog. And I had to say, oh, Mr Branagh, you're a collie dog, so, you know... <laughs> Get into the part. It was awful. It's like the Hang worst. How do you get into the part? How do you get into the part of being a collie dog if you're Kenneth Branagh? OK, darling, my this motivation. You know, visualise it, love. You're a dog. You've got a black and white face and you're lovely and you're woof. <laughs> <laughs> he was really sweet. He listened to me like, oh, yeah, yes. good advice. But teaching your granny how to suck eggs was nothing on that. It was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> OK, you have a £1,000. Um, what's your goal? Oh, anything. Not make himself look silly. Too late for that. OK. <laughs> That's a good point. What's Ooh. your goal? Come on, be... be oh, I'd love 50, wouldn't I? Would yeah, I'd love it, but the questions are so hard. Ah, come on, you've got three lifelines. Mm -hmm. Right, question number three is for £2,000. In which sport my competitors perform a triple axle? Ski jumping, figure skating, snowboarding, luge. I do think I know this, but I'm rubbish at sport. I'd be mad to use one of my lifelines now. Because you know when you watch that skating show with all the celebrities <laughs> and yeah. it'd be really hard to do a triple axel because I, I think it's just like, woof, 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 woof. Triple <laughs> axel. Ski jumping. Do you know it's like talking to a Martian? <laughs> <laughs> Is it me? It, everything, <laughs> everything in my whole body saying triple axel is figure skating. Figure skating. Final answer. Final answer. Now, once it goes to orange, there's no going back. You can't change your mind. I mean, you had three lifelines you could use. I know. And you saved them for later. Yeah. And this is wrong, there won't be a later. No. 
but it's right. You got two thousand pounds. What? You got two thousand pounds. Ready for another one? Okay. You have two thousand pounds. Question number four is for five thousand. Take your time. Have a look. You have three lifelines intact. Here it comes. I never did nothing. Is an example of what? Conjunction. Subordinate clause. Antonym. Double negative. It's a double negative. Sure. Want to play? Yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> Final answer? Yeah. You just won five thousand pounds. <laughs> Okay, you have five thousand pounds. Question number five is for ten grand. You have three <gasps> lifelines still untouched. Here it comes. The world's largest reptile is what kind of animal? Crocodile, lizard, turtle, tortoise. One of those is worth ten thousand pounds. Now looking at that, it seemed really obvious, but I know there's such a thing as a Komodo dragon. And that's not a lizard. All oh, right, I see what you're saying. <laughs> and they're huge. So I think what I'd like to do is a 50-50, please. OK, see what happens. Right. Good plan. Right. Uh, computer take away two random wrong answers, leave Nicole the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. Turtles can get huge. They really can. Oh, my goodness. You still got a nasty audience? You I'm going to ask the friend. audience. Are you? Yeah, I hope I haven't confused anyone. <laughs> okay, audience, right. Serious business, and this is for £10,000. This is the question. The world's largest reptile is what kind of animal? Now, A on your keypads is crocodile, C is turtle. B and D obviously have gone. A or C, please, all vote now. Seventy-six percent say crocodile. Twenty-four percent say turtle. You think they're wrong? Don't know. I don't know. Seventy-six percent is really massive. But I know if I get the answer wrong, I'm back out the door. <laughs> um, obvious. It just seems it says crocodile. Obvious answer is crocodile. Just the world's know. largest reptile is what kind of animal? Crocodile or turtle? Should I phone a friend? They know. I think I'm going to go for crocodile. Oh, gosh. Crocodile. Crocodiles are huge. Crocodile. Final answer. Final answer. <laughs> I tell you, Karen up there on her keypad thinks you're wrong. She thinks it's turtle. Oh, no. Does she know? How do you think you've done? Is it the right answer? Just won £10,000. <laughs>